Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to, the, to our today's product demo, Theme Backup Replication, extending and storing Theme Backups to the cloud. My name is Georgi Solante. I'm an Inside Systems Engineer covering the whole central EMEA region. Um, it's Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, supporting customers and partners all around technical stuff regarding Veeam products. Um, and I will be your host today. First and foremost, please confirm that you can hear me loud and clearly, that you can see the presentation. Um, please use the question section within our tool to ask any questions and even to confirm that you can hear me. This is very important, otherwise I won't be able to start the presentation without being sure that you can hear me. Yeah, so thank you. I see the first answers are coming in. And by the way, um, feel free to ask anything related to our today's topic. Um, I will answer questions uh, later on at the end of our presentation. So let's jump right into a topic Veeam backup replication. First thing we need to discuss is actually, um, yeah, the whole construct of the Veeam availability suite. It's very simple. It's actually a bundle which consists of uh, Veeam backup replication, which provides a centralized data protection solution and management um, for your cloud virtual and physical workloads. So with Veeam's core capabilities around backup, recovery along with replication and failover. Um, they all combine the cornerstone of Veeam flagship products and Veeam availability suite simply attaches the monitoring and analytics capabilities of Veeam 1 to uh, the already powerful, simple, flexible um, data protection features of Veeam backup application into one enterprise bundle to meet your both uh, protection and analytic needs. Um, all that, of course, with the modern backup platform with advanced backup and recovery capabilities with intelligent monitoring baked in. And of course, with governance and compliance, it completely hybrid cloud enabled with cloud flexibility for your uh, migration purposes. Even multi-cloud strategies are also supported with data mutability, can be in the cloud, can be on-premises, depending on what your uh, backup strategy needs predicted to be and of course it's 100 percent portable so you can move around your backups without even noticing it and of course with built-in replication we've discussed it before bandwidth optimized replication and with built-in in-flight and at rest encryption so scale up backup repository is the thing we need to discuss before we move on because it's actually very simple it's a construct that allows you to scale your multi-tier storage platform. It's very simple. It's a scale-up backup repository, which consists of one or more backup repositories called performance tiers. And uh, then can be added or expanded with an object storage repository for your long-term or archival storage needs, as we call them capacity tier and archive tier. All the storage devices uh, within the system uh, within uh, a scale of backup repository are joined into one logical entity with the capacities and capabilities summarized. So it's a very extendable scale out repository that embraces several extents, as we call them, um, and with uh, many different other options for you to combine with. So the performance tier. It's your local storage tier within the scale out backup repository. It's uh, yeah very easy to handle, with easy to set up. Um, you can send backups, backup copies to a single scale out backup repository, and Veeam will choose under the hood and track the restore points on multiple storage devices. So we have extends. Um, very simple is different storage locations within the performance tier. It could be something direct attached to block storage or a SAN storage 
It could be network attached storage by NFS or SMB, for instance. It could be even a deduplication appliance like Dell MC Data Domain, HP Store Once, Exagrid, or Quantum TXI. And they all can be added into a single scale out backup repository. And of course, once you've added deduplication appliance, that's what's most um, for keeping a massive amount of data as efficient as possible. Um, you start thinking about placement policies where you would like to put your, to place your incremental backups and your full backups. So we have two different placement policies, the performance policy, which allows you to choose whether you would like to um, maybe store on disk repository, your full backups on a deduplicated appliance, maybe some baked in block cloning capabilities of a file system that they're using um, and data locality policy, but we will look at them later on in the demo. So performance tier, and of course, next to it, we do have the capacity. It's completely native object integrated with support for AWS S3, now Azure Blob Storage, IBM Cloud Object Storage, and a new in version 11 for Beam Backup Replication is the support for Google Cloud Storage. And you can even support, um, place your backup files on an S3 compatible service provider on on-premises storage offerings. It gives you, of course, theoretically unlimited capacity for your long-term data retention. If we talking about the hyperscalers and no double charges for storing your data in the cloud. And like with other backup providers who impose a so-called cloud tax. And as always with Veeam, no vendor lock-ins um, associated with, it, with secondary storage appliances. So you're free to choose. Um, if you start with something simple like um, maybe an AWS S3 offering and then decide to um, build an S3 storage yourself on premises, you can simply uncheck one box, check the other box, and then you're good to go. You switch from one S3 provider to another. It could be even another uh, cloud provider. So with capacity, we've brought the immutable storage option. Um, as it's an object lock technology, which is provided by Amazon it's in its S3 protocol and other S3 compatible storage offerings, which prohibits block deletion until an expiration date is reached. And um, by having an object storage added to your already locally exposed storage infrastructure, you can combine the three to one rule in one job, which is very easy. You create a single backup job, which automatically creates a second copy of the data in the object storage. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the three to one rule, it's very simple. It's a data protection rules that uh, defines that you have to have three different copies of your data on two different media types and one of them must be off-site. So capacity tier. We discussed it before, performance tier. Combine your direct attached network attached storages, DDoP appliances into a performance tier and then you have different options. You can create an immediate copy to the capacity tier. You can move the backups, the older they get. So something like a retention policy for your on-premises located backup files. It is completely policy-based, so no backup copy jobs to deal with. Um, you have, as I've mentioned, the copy, uh, the option to copy and or offload based on remaining capacity based on um, uh, different expiration dates. It's completely transparent. So your scale of backup repository will expand and use the object storage based on the policy setup. So again, no extra jobs, no extra tasks. It's uh, space efficient, of course, with built-in compression for every incremental uh, source site deduplication and of course, encryption, which uh, by the way, doesn't break uh, the other two. It's self-sufficient. Again, we don't take your data hostage. You can import and restore at any time in the future without any license required and no extra costs. Of course, from the Veeam side, um, you have to pay for, for the uh, public cloud offerings you're using you, or you plan to use. Again, we don't tax you for storing the data in the cloud. One more thing, 
before we jump into the demo, Archive tier. A new feature which came with version 11, which allow you to uh, save you costs on your long-term archival storage. And of course, we see it as customers are moving from tape to cold cloud storage to reduce the costs for their long-term archival needs. Um, you are a customer, you, you're often faced with a manual process that lives um, outside of the data management capabilities of your current data protection solution. Um, which cloud is supported, um, the threat of ransomware, and this all adds risks and complexity to uh, backup data lifecycle management. We've uh, simplified it um, with, in addition, uh, like an archive tier, we like to call it the uh, write once, uh, read hopefully almost never um, storage tier. Uh, it's again completely policy based. Um, we do have the option to um, add an archive tier based on AWS S3 Glacier, including Glacier Deep Archive. And um, you can move your um, backups residing on a capacity tier based on Microsoft Azure Blob uh, to Microsoft Azure Blob Archive. And by combining in an archive tier, uh, with the capacity tier and the performance tier, you can now reach an immutability on all backup tiers, starting with the performance tier, where we do have the option to make the uh, most important, most recent um, backup chains, backup files immutable with our hardened Linux repository, which is, by the way, uh, a new feature we've introduced in version 11 of the backup application. Then we do have the uh, AWS S3 offerings and um, S3 compatible storage, which supports the S3 object lock APIs, and of course the archive tier with uh, AWS S3 or um, Glacier or uh, Glacier Deep Archive. So it's very simple to start. You can add an uh, archive tier to your existing scale up backup repository, um, or uh, you can uh, create a new scale up backup repository and add it uh, there. So with that said, um, let's jump into our today's demo. Um, let me briefly open the demo environment. So here it is. Um, we are now logged into our um, demo environment. We do have um, already pre-configured um, uh, different roles in our demo lab. So it's very easy um, to build a scale-up backup repository. We do need to uh, add the uh, different extents first. So as you can see, uh, add repository, and here you have the different options. As I mentioned, direct attached storage based on the Windows Linux uh, operating system, network attached storage, and NFS share and SMB share SIFs. And uh, of course, the deduplication options are here as well um, with the uh, models I've mentioned earlier. They do have their own uh, requirements, so please refer, uh, refer to our help center um, to get more on the uh, requirements. And of course, the object storage integration, as we've discussed earlier, uh, introduction um, in version 11 is the Google Cloud Storage and a support for AWS S3 Glacier, including Glacier Deep Archive. And by the way, uh, AWS Snowball Edge is supported as well um, with uh, an Microsoft Azure, uh, alternative uh, uh, called Azure Data Box. So, for today's demo purposes, we will use an already pre configured AWS S3 repository. I will guide you through all of them. So, we start with the performance tier. In our case, it's a uh, Windows machine with uh, attached uh, volumes um, running ReFS. So, we've already added uh, Windows machine that we will be used use as a repository. We define a location, the load control, we can limit the concurrent amount of tasks based on um, virtual disks we would like to process concurrently. Then we define the mount server, it's a role that we need to have to be able to granularly restore files, application items, and even um, for instant recovery procedures. So once we click on finish, Veeam will deploy its um, needed 
services on the machine and then we can jump into the configuration of a um, capacity tier. In our case it'll be an AWS S3 bucket that we will be using. So the next step account is to provide the uh, credentials, your uh, secret keys, your cloud credentials, select the AWS region. In our case we are using the global AWS infrastructure. Um, if your backup server uh, sits behind a firewall or you can define a gateway server that will directly communicate with the um, hyperscaler options. Then we're loading the AWS S3 configuration, enumerating the buckets, the data center. Um, so from here you can choose um, if you're creating a new uh, capacity to a new object storage repository, you can select the data center um, region, you can select the buckets, you can even create the folder directly from here. And here's where the uh, interesting part stops, uh, starts. Excuse me, um, I misclicked myself. So we do have the option to limit the uh, consumption of the object storage in uh, forms of uh, tera or petabytes. Um, we can make the recent backups immutable for a, a, a defined amount of time. In our case, it's in, uh, 30 days. And here, please bear in mind, start simple. Because um, if you set it once for, let's say, 90 days, but it's a mistake, um, even the AWS support won't be able to delete these backups. So start simple, uh, get yourself familiar with the storage consumption, um, even try deleting something and then you can then define one policy that will switch your needs and of course you can use the infrequent storage access class so we could apply and then the capacity is ready to go and of course the archive tier so here is pretty much the same name brief description uh, the next step is to provide the secrets, uh, the credentials, and we do have a separation between different um, performance tiers. Um, it's best practice to keep them separated. Of course, the AWS region as well can be defined in here. Um, again, the gateway server settings, and the next step is to enumerate the um, bucket configuration, the data center region, the bucket, and the folder. And from here, you can make the uh, backups immutable as well for, for the entire duration of the retention policy you will define later on in the backup job and uh, of course use the deep archive storage class. So one more thing we haven't discussed uh, earlier is the uh, proxy appliance. Um, what is the proxy appliance? Very easy. Um, the proxy appliance is, a, is an appliance that will be um, according to the uh, configuration you'll um, you will set up in here, uh, will deploy on demand once we need to transfer the data files from a capacity tier into an archive tier. So it's not living there 24-7, uh, um, it's only being started on demand with the settings you define in here. So you need to connect it to uh, VPC, to subnet, to security group, you can create um, all of them directly from the Linux visit. And of course, if you need to redirect the port, you can do it here as well. So we've created a scale out backup repository. We've added um, performance tier, capacity tier, and an archive tier. Later on, don't get confused by the um, repository name. It's not only a object storage repository, it's a scale out backup repository, which consists of a ReFS um, performance tier, an S3 capacity tier, and an S3 Glacier archive tier. So once we've configured it, let's jump into a backup job. Let's create some backup jobs. We do have already uh, added the um, virtual infrastructure as a source infrastructure. We need to backup. So um, let's select maybe a uh, backup for the domain controller running in, inside a virtual machine uh, on a VMware cluster. So let's look at the configurations. Name, brief description. Then we do have to select our source 
In our case, it's only one virtual machine. Next step is to select the storage. And of course, we are defining here the backup proxy, a role that will directly communicate with the source and the target. In our case, the target is an AWS scalar backup repository with the capacity in an archive tier. And in here, you define the retention policy. Mine is set at 30 days. You can change it to restore points. You can configure um, primary GFS flags for your um, long-term needs. Uh, you can even then uh, check the box uh, with the uh, secondary destinations, the secondary targets. Uh, in here, we do have the uh, backup copy jobs uh, and, of course, the backup to tape jobs. You can also add them in here. The guest processing setting, so almost pretty much the same. Um, only one thing differ that we will then combine the uh, different approaches. So let's jump into the scale of backup repository settings for a second. I forgot to do it. Uh, name, description, the performance tier. So in here we can add multiple extents, as you can see. We do have a selection of backup repositories that aren't an, um, an extent of an already configured scale out backup repository. So maybe uh, you do have a dedupe appliance, you can select it in here. Um, the next step is then to uh, select the placement policy. We've discussed it with the performance policy and data locality. Data locality means that really um, an active backup chain is always being placed on one extent and one extent only. So all dependent backup files are placed on the same extent. Um, if the um, backup files uh, need to be separated from different for different extents, um, let's imagine we we would have a dedupe appliance in here, maybe something like an exagrid. Um, then uh, we will maybe place there only the full backup files because we do have a more uh, performance um, backup repository with 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 excuse me with a full flash array. Um, so we can place there only the incremental backup files for faster recovery for the most recent backup files. So the next step uh, is to uh, select the capacity here, and here we do have uh, different. Um, options we can select. So if we select only the first checkbox, copy backups to an object storage as soon as they are created, this is, means is something finalized is present on the performance tier, Veeam will then start offloading the data to the cloud. If we only select the move, that this will mean with, that we are defining a retention policy, uh, so we will offload everything that's older than 10 days, um, we can um, even select the uh, capacity as a parameter in here. And we also can combine these two options uh, to first copy the data and then delete everything that's outdated. We can always encrypt the data we are offloading to an object storage, no matter if it's um, AWS S3 and um, on-premises S3 offering something like Mineo or um, Ceph, um, Azure, IBM Cloud, Google Cloud Storage, you can always encrypt the data you're offloading. And uh, the next step is to um, uh, include the archive tier. If you don't have an archive tier, this checkbox will be unchecked. Um, but in our case, uh, for today's demo purposes, we do have an archive tier. Uh, it's an AWS S3 Glacier, so we can define a retention policy here as well. So we are offloading everything that's older than 40 days, uh, 13, uh, 14 days, and we do have the option to keep them standalone for backups and uh, even archive the backups with a minimal retention time. So, uh, yeah, once we've created the backup job, um, we will see that we do have the options um, where to select where the backups reside. Uh, so the disk is obviously the performance tier. Uh, let's select the same machine. So as you can see, um, we do have the virtual machine in here and maybe we will uh, 
uh, we, we do need to perform a full VM restore, we can then select the restore point. Maybe we don't need the latest restore point. So let's see, we, we've been here in this job. So you can see the type of the um, backup file. So um, for backup, increment backup, and of course the location. So our most recent points, uh, 10 of them, are present in the performance tier. And um, everything else is in the capacity tier. So if we want to maybe start an instant VM recovery from, a, let's see, from a restore point that, um, that's older than 10 days, um, we will be able to do so. If you're um, if you need to explicitly select something that only resides in the uh, object storage, that's only present in the object storage, you can select backups, object storage, and then you can see the same virtual machine is present in here. Um, we do have a confusion with the uh, restore points, but that's because we've messed around uh, with the uh, backup job settings um, before. So again, we can select the restore point, and uh, see the location as well. So this will always show you where the uh, backup files are present. And if we would have something in the archive tier, um, unfortunately our retention policy, uh, our backup chain isn't old enough. Uh, we haven't uh, really uploaded, um, uploaded something to um, archive tier, but bear in mind only the GFS backups will be offloaded. That's We do have a reason for that. We would like to um, make the whole um, strategy as cost effective as possible. So with that said, um, that's pretty much it that um, I wanted to show you. Um, we do have a, a lot of resources available for you. Uh, this isn't the only product demo um, Veeam has for you to offer. You can, of course, as well um, look up uh, other product demos, um, register for other live demos. Uh, we do have a vast um, resource library available for you. This all can be found directly on the veeam.com website. Let me guide you through this. And of course, feel free to ask some questions. Um, I don't see any coming in. Um, we do have a couple more minutes. So let me guide you through. Veeam.com. And under resources, you always have the option to browse our resource library with analyst reports, white papers, other webinars, more uh, in-depth webinars other than uh, what's happening here. I think it's uh, due to the scaling options. Um, and of course, other product demos, uh, pre-recorded ones or upcoming videos. So this is the one uh, we had today. Later on, we do have other uh, with a product overview with uh, a more focus on uh, software as a service, um, data protection within the Microsoft 365 Cloud, Beam Disaster Career Administrator, and many more. So. With that said, um, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Um, we've learned today how you can extend your infrastructure with uh, object uh, storages um, and, of course, uh, create a multi-tier uh, backup repository infrastructure uh, for you to keep your backups safe and, of course, uh, compile with your uh, short-term and long-term um, archival needs. Thank you much for coming. Um, I hope to see you on our next sessions and uh, keep safe and stay well.